Very good evening. Jai Shri Krishna Guru. Thank you for joining Sai Sat Charitra Parayan. I hope you had a wonderful day today. Wishing you all a very happy Navratri. Om Shri Guru Pyo Namah Om Shri Ganeshaya Namah Om Shri Saraswataya Namah Om Shri Guru Dattatre Namah Om Shri Mahalakshme Namah Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwara Guru Sakshat Parabrahma Tasmai Shri Guru Ve Namah Shri Sai Sat Charitra The Life and Teachings of Shri Di Sai Baba. Let us continue from where we stop. That is chapter 35. The, remo the removal of doubts and glorification of the Udi. My obeisance to Shri Ganesh, to Shri Saraswati and Shri Guru Maharaj, to the family deity, to Shri Sita Ramachandra, my most humble obeisance, I bow in reverence to the most venerable Guru, Shri Sainath. We stopped at verse 195. I will now continue from 196. Yesterday, we understood the power of the Udi and also the importance of why Baba takes Dakshina and how Baba gives everybody a spiritual wheel. The reason why he collects Dakshina is because he wants to, you know, redeem their karma, redeem them, remo re remove their sins or, you know, put them on the path of spirituality. That is on the path of love and devotion. Such is the power of the Udi. To the saints, all this is easy and natural. As the faith, so is the experience. However, talking about the greatness of the Woody and the deep devotion of Nevaskar, I am reminded of yet another story about him. Listen to it. I had a little doubt whether this will be a digression from the main narrative. But now I think whatever it may be, I must present it to the readers in the present context. And having made this resolve in my mind, I shall proceed to narrate it to you at this juncture. May the listeners pardon me if they think it misplaced. Once a resident of Shirdi, Raghu Patil by name, had gone to Nevasa and was staying at his Bala's house as his guest. One night, when the cattle were all tied up by the rope to the snake, to the stake, suddenly a cobra entered the cattle shed, making a hissing sound. Caught up in such a perilous situation, everybody was stunned, while the cobra stationed himself there, raising his hood. The cattle moved restlessly, struggling to free themselves. But Nevaskar was convinced that it was Sai himself who had appeared. There was no other way but to let loose the cattle lest someone stepped unwittingly on the cobra and brought on a disaster. Nevaskar was overjoyed as he saw the cobra from some distance. His hair stood on end all over his body with deep emotion. At once he prostrated before him in obeisance. It is Sai's great favour, he said, that he has come to meet us in the form of this cobra. He brought a bati filled with milk for the cobra. Truly, what faith and devotion Balaji must have had, must have had not to have even a trace of fear and just listen attentively to what he said to that cobra. Baba, why do you make that, make that angry hissing sound? Are you trying to frighten us? Take, take this bati of milk and drink it at your ease. But how can a cobra be ever satisfied with just a vati of milk? So he brought a vessel full of milk and placed it fearlessly before him. Really, fear is created only by one's mind. Placing the milk near him, Balaji went and sat down at his earlier seat. Neither too far nor too near. His face showed a fond admiration for the cobra. The entrance of the cobra was truly terrifying. And yet, how can everyone's response to the situation be the same? They were all worried and bewildered as to how the calamity could be averted. If we go out, there is fear that the cobra will enter the inner room. From where he is coming, out will be difficult. So they sat patiently, keeping a close watch. The cobra here was satiated and slipped out, eluding everybody's notice. No one knew where all were quite astonished. Then they searched the entire cattle shed but could not find any trace of him. Most of them were quite relieved. Only Nevaskar had regrets in his heart. The regret was that 
he did not see him departing as he had seen him entering the cattle shed earlier. Bala had two wives and his children were still very young. Sometimes they all came from Nevasa to Shirdi for Baba's darshan. For both his wives, Baba used to buy saris along with blouse pieces and used to bless them. Such was the great devotee Balaji. Such was that great devotee Balaji. The path of this Satcharit is simple and straightforward. Whatever it, it is being read, there is Dwarka Mai there too. I mean, wherever it is being read, there is Dwarka Mai there too. And Sai too is present. Most certainly, how beautiful. See, where you're reading the Leelas of Baba and any guru for that matter, there exists that Dwarka Mai, there ex exists the Golok Vrindavan and there exists every other universe, heaven on earth. The divine, it's, it's a dwelling place of the Lord Almighty themselves. The dwelling place of the great gurus. With this, I would like to narrate in this context a very beautiful experience which I recently had with my Krishna Guruji. Not recent, a year back. Last year, we were traveling in Jaipur. During our pilgrimage, we went to the temple, a very famous temple called Govindji Mandir in Jaipur. It is temple where Mirabai had worshipped Lord Sri Krishna. My Guruji and me went there and it was told that they open the temple every half an hour or every one hour the puja is being performed and after that they shut down and they reopen. So we arrived there at a particular hour and we were waiting for the timing of the temple to be open and we entered that place. Yes, the place was filled with people. My Guruji will always stand behind and both of us were waiting for the arti to be completed and to take darshan of Lord Shri Krishna. You know, this, it was very beautiful experience standing beside my Guruji, who is an essence of the Lord Almighty himself. And it was, it is, I was speechless and I can't describe what I felt. And in North India, the way the puja is being performed is completely different than what I have experienced in South Indian temples. So we stood there when the arti was waved, everything was finished. Then my Guruji said, there's too many people were there. So he said to me, now you go ahead. I went, you know, uh, amongst the crowd. My Guruji was still standing behind and went there and saw him. Even today, I can remember the beautiful divine face of that idol, the Lord Sri Krishna. So it's just the bhakti that, oh my God, the saint worshipped here. You are very much here, you know, that, that fake. Oh my. And I looked back looking at my Guruji. Krishna is looking at Lord Sri Krishna. How, how sweet. I don't know. It's a strange experience. I saw the face of Lord Sri Krishna and I turned back to look where my Guruji is. So it was right there behind, you know, he was, he was seen. And I observed how the temple were, was and how they have uh, decorated Lord Sri Krishna. Then, you know, seeing all of that, I was quite happy. It was, it was a feeling of extreme joy. Then I came back. Then I said, my Guruji, come, let's go now. The crowd, all of them went away and then we went ahead. So we once again took the darshan and then we came out. So we were buying prashad, in a, you know, from, from the stall there. And so I just turned like that and I opened a packet, one laddu in my hand. I just opened a piece of laddu and I was going to eat. You know what? From nowhere, one huge dog, literally like, you know, it's, he's going to jump. I'm a very fearful person. Dogs, I, I will run miles miles away you know i'm extremely scared and this dog literally just came ahead like that and i was having laddu in my hand for the first time i was not afraid of the dog i knew you know i looked into its eyes there was the lord it is lord Sri krishna in him he's telling me i want prashad and, and it's a very happy moment so that's exactly what happens when you understand that is the divine there is no fear there on the contrary, you get attracted because I know that is Lord Sri Krishna. Could see that love in his eyes. But in the dog form, you know, he's really quite tall, the dog was. And he kept coming towards my Guruji and myself, especially towards me. Then my Guruji said, give him that laddu. <laughs> and then I was eating half the laddu. Then I oh, gave him. And after he eating, then he went away. So cute, you know. It was, I was literally in tears. I said, I saw him. This is called that experience, but they're just there for that moment. You know, it's, it's that few seconds, that few minutes. That is all you can experience. That's a grace. 
and that is how you experience the divinity my guruji will always say it is just that moment in time and then they'll, they'll disappear then the dog will become an ordinary it is just that lord shri krishna used that dog to manifest in it and give me that darshan but do you have the eyes to see that you know divine being he can take any form and come it is the grace you need you know even today i am not i can't forget that beautiful dog it's just, as i'm narrating the story i'm teleported to that moment he's literally there you know he's just trying to come like that and i wasn't afraid one bit somebody will run my is apart and some dog comes near me like that i didn't and on the contrary there's a love i could experience that love that is exactly what happens here never you know the nevaskar experienced baba in that cobra because he knew that is baba that is the faith that is what is extremely important you know how sweet it was and my guru ji telling me to give him laddu it is the most amazing moment and then the moment i offered the laddu he just ate and went away how sweet was that this is called the faith in the divine when you have that faith you can experience god in any form they can don any form and come but you need to have that eyes to see them and recognize them in that moment that is why you know uh, it is said that you never know when the god comes be ready are you ready to receive god god can come any time he's not going to give you an in you know intimate invitation or he's not telling you that i am going to come at so and so time no he can come at any moment are you ready to receive him so always be prepared this is what my krishna guru ji will teach are you prepared in life today if the god comes and stands in front of you and says ask me a boon what do you want from me do you know what you been what what do you want what are you going to ask him are you going to say i want a million dollar but are you prepared how you want to ask him million dollar um god will say okay tatas tu but that million dollar will be given in you in million more lives so every you know uh, in every life he will give you you know 10000 or 1 million in every life does it work no so he'll say you need to also be prepared what to ask it's not about asking petty things you know material worldly things no you always have to seek that grace and you don't need to ask anything that's the most beautiful thing but you need to be there to understand you need to also you know be prepared to receive the grace to receive that divine knowledge also and you know be there be, uh, be able to understand when these divine beings manifest and recognize them and seek that grace you know always pray worship god give me the grace to recognize you that is the most important thing you know that that was such a beautiful experience i never see these things are not expected you are not going there thinking that you are going to meet lord shri krishna you go only because you just want to worship because it's a it's a very profound place where the great saint mirabai had worshiped lord shri krishna and even today the lord shri krishna exists it's it's the faith that you have from other people them he might be the govind the go, the govind ji just might be a idol but for me it's lord my lord shri krishna he is very much there that is the faith and you know when my guru ji is you know entering the temple is definitely establishing the divinity over there even more stronger even more powerfully that is the beauty because why it is about devotion and it is very beautiful and this 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 bhajan is going on you know how divine it is you get teleported into a different world then you know this material world seems such a futile place where you are hankering after material worldly things has no value but you know what you should be extremely grateful for this human body why because only through this human body can you experience that love for the divine can you experience devotion can you understand this truth such is the greatness and importance of this human body too so do not discount this human birth make use of it the path of this sacharit is simple and straightforward wherever it is being read there is dwarka mai there too and sai too is present most certainly and so are there the banks of godavari and there nearby is the holy shirdi there at the that very place is sai with his dhuni to ward off calamities at the mere resemblance remembrance of his name see you need to understand when we do this the parayan of any scriptures you need to understand there is always going to be that goodness the the divine grace the divinity is always going to be around so it doesn't matter where you read where you sit in you know even if you chant the name of the divine please understand there lives that divinity 
And this is what even Baba is conveying here. I am over here. When this Parayan is being narrated and you're listening, there exists to Baba right here in this Krishna Ashram and with you too. So have that faith. Where Sai's life story is being read, there Sai is present always. And when it is read with faith again and again, he is pleased. So he is extremely happy. That is the ultimate Guru Dakshina you can offer to him. That is the ultimate love and devotion you can offer to him. That is the greatest seva you can do to him and to yourself. When Sai, the abode of bliss is remembered, when his name is chanted every day, no other chanting or penance, no arduous effort for meditation and contemplation is needed. Those who smear his vibhuti and drink it every day with faith and devotion will have all the desires of their heart fulfilled. They will attain the four highest goals of human life like dharma, artha, kama and moksha etc. and will find fulfillment. The profound secret significance of both the worldly and spiritual life will be revealed to them. See, it is very important to understand why this human birth, why is this material world and what is the importance of the spiritual life. That is what will be revealed. And when you understand the truth, you will use this, you know, living on this planet earth, serving your purpose. You will focus on attaining your spiritual being. Nobody is saying that you should not work. Nobody is saying that you should not do your duties. My Guruji will always say, work is worship, be the best you are in that. But you don't have to get attached to your job or anything. Every action should be done in a detached manner. Be detached from everybody. Do everything in a detached manner. Always know that every action of yours should only be devoted to the Divine Lord Almighty. Even if you're talking, sitting, eating, sleeping, doing anything, everything should be named, everything should be done in the name of the divine alone. And then you will do nishkama karma, selfless action. Then there is no karma accruing to you and you're not getting attached to that action. Terrible sins like the Mahapapas as also all the lesser sins will be destroyed by contact with the Udi and there will be purification inwardly and outwardly. The devotees know too well the great power of the Udi when applied but it is for the benefit of the listeners that the description has been given at length. And yet it is improper to say that the description is given at length for I myself do not know it adequately but still I have only briefly narrated it for my listeners benefit. Hence, I pray to the listeners that after bowing to Sai, they should experience it for themselves. Do listen to my words this once. Reasoning and arguments are of no avail here. Only deep reverence is needed. Ingenuity of mind does not help either, but devotion and faith are required. Those who are intellectual, argumentative, inquisitive, but without faith will never receive the highest knowledge from the saints. It will be received only by him who has a pure faith. See, it's not just faith, you know, pure faith. Anybody will say, oh, I have faith, I have faith. Why are you having faith? Because you have no other go. You know, sometimes my Guruji will say this very cutely. I'll say, Krishna, you know, he'll say to me, when, you know, if I argue on some subject and I have been a very argumentative person in the beginning, now I don't that much, you will evolve. So when you understand the truth, you will shut up because argument you know being argumentative is also a human nature those are all demons i think we have discussed enough of demons this whole week in devi mahatmya so that is also another asura in us so what happens is you want to prove that you are right how can you prove yourself right that in front of a great master the knowledge incarnate you think they don't know so they know it better than me and then so they humbly listen to all the crap sometimes we talk only to understand that Sometimes they don't say anything simply because they understand we are ignorant human being. We are, we behave in a petty manner. Our mind doesn't understand. So that is why sometimes they just let it be. But my Guruji has very beautifully taught, faith just doesn't mean, you know, faith. It means a pure faith. What does that mean? What is the word pure faith? Pure faith means Today, you, people have no alternative. So like my Guruji said, you have no other choice. That is why you are there. I know that is why you are listening. Otherwise, you wouldn't be because you are not going to, you know, take it from me. 
sometimes it is like that so don't think because you don't have an alternative or you don't have a choice that is why you want to have faith no that is wrong pure faith means you have that absolute faith in that divine lord almighty you know even if someone wakes you up in the middle of middle of the night the only name that should come from your mouth is that divine lord almighty is or your gurus nothing else and you know that nothing can go wrong they're always there that is the conviction and faith you need to have faith is not just saying oh i have faith and when the moment of you know test comes then your your faith is the third then you you question whether this divinity is existing or not please understand no matter what happens in your life everything is happening for the good alone the grace of the lord almighty is always with you and you will be able to overcome that and any event that happens in our life is only because of the prarabdha karma see many times i earlier i used to say krishna ma why are you doing this and my guruji will always teach me i don't do anything it has taken me a, you know many years to understand this truth actually my guruji doesn't do anything the god doesn't do anything please remember this it is your karma it is your prarabdha karma because of which those actions happen and they will come to be whether it is sickness whether it is any calamity it could be a minor accident or whatever that you have to face in this life of yours that will come to be and that is only because of your prarabdha karma whether it is success or whether it is failure whether you will get billion dollar or whether you will become a pauper everything is because of your prarabdha karma so don't blame the god ever and don't blame your guru Uh, you know there people have this dirty habit of saying guruji you are the one who is doing this what nonsense guruji doesn't do anything he is mere a witness on the contrary he grants his grace and redeems you of that calamities he averts that calamities in your life god doesn't do this is something you need to understand the only way to be humble and not be egoistic saying i am the doer we have to attribute to him god you are the one who does everything see the lord almighty is a substratum but he doesn't do anything everything happens because of the prakriti the mother nature the maya makes it happen it is not the lord please understand the maya is the not the lord the maya is independent though she comes from it is lord's maya we say it is not the lord it is lord's maya so this is something you need to understand so never attribute any action to your guruji please know that oh you are the one who does it why will my guru why will any guruji do you think they are jobless people is it they don't even care a damn about any of these things they are you know ever they are avadutas they are not involved in any actions the gunas perform in the gunas in that case they don't even have any sensual pleasures there is no mind to them because they are the para brahman they are this universal mind so you need to understand so never attribute anything to the guru don't even open your mouth and say guruji you are the one who is doing it why is guruji doing you are the one who is causing me pain and trouble rubbish everything is happening only because of your prarabdha karma so understand that truth and and just you know seek for that grace that you should be able to face it and everything should be solved whatever that could be you know you might have a problem you might have a health issues just pray for that grace pray for that well being that is all you can ask but don't blame god god is not the doer and like i said you only attribute it so that you are ego is not getting risen you don't have your ego shouldn't go oh i am the greatest lord almighty no it can't think i am the doer what has lord shri krishna said in bhagavad gita that don't take the ownership i am the doer please understand you just you are just an instrument of the lord you are performing because you have to perform you are only a marionette you know the puppet in the hands of the puppeteer and the lord is the puppeteer how he makes it happen it is not because he is directly you know making you making you do it it is through your inherent nature in the 18th chapter lord shri krishna has beautifully explained you will be perforced perform perforced perform means if you say i am not going to do some things whether you like it or not that action will in, in, invariably happen through you are born out of your own inherent nature so it is your nature which will make you perform those actions and because of the prarabdha karma this is how you will do in this world you don't have a choice whether you like it or not so never attribute anything to the guru or the god they are never the doers but when you pray to them they will always you know have the prarabdha karma cushion and whatever the fall will be if you are falling from the 10th feet and you have to break your leg or your head 
it will just go with few scratch or you know nothing shall befall you that is the grace that you will have okay so let us continue now considering the deficiencies in the story to be a part of that inspiration that Sai gave me, overlook these defects as you read that Sai Satcharit. May this establish Sai's loving, ever compassionate image in the hearts of the appreciative readers as a constant reminder of him to them. Where Gomantak, that is Goa, and where Shirdi, the fascinating, delightful story of theft there, which Sai narrated quite openly and in detail, will be narrated in the next chapter. Hence, Hemad bows his head at Sai's feet wholeheartedly and very humbly entreats the listeners to listen to it with res respectfully. So here ends the 35th chapter of Sri Sai, Satchar Sat Sorry, Sri Sai Samarth Satcharit called The Removal of Doubts and Glorification of the Woody as Inspired by the Saints and the Virtuous and Composed by His Devotee Hemad Pant. With that, we will now begin chapter 36 which is Sai's all-pervasiveness and the fulfillment of his blessings. To pick up the threads from the previous chapter, a narration of the fascinating tale of a theft will now follow, which I had promised. Listen to it attentively. This is not just a story, but the water of self-joy, which on drinking will only increase your thirst for more, to quench which another story will then be related. So absorbing is this story that the listeners will be delighted. Listening to it, it will remove the exhaustion and the sorrows of worldly life and will bring a state of happiness and peace. The fortunate man who really wishes to attain his own good should always listen respectfully to the narration of Sai's stories. So boundless is the power of saints that no one can truly describe it. When what then of my meagre capacity? And of this, I am fully aware. But even that little ego of the narrator is enough for Sai, who in, in his ingenuity uses anyone to describe his excellent qualities for the benefit of his devotees. He is indeed that swan swimming in the, in the lake that is God, who is not merely absorbed in the state of so hum, but is eager to feed on the pearls that is Brahma and is very daring. Who though without a name or place enjoys unlimited glory and with the power of his one glance can transform a pauper into a wealthy man. He is that Brahmanyana incarnate who himself having experienced it brings people a perception, perception of God in a vision and brings about various incidents himself remaining completely out of everything. I hope you understand. He is not in anything. He doesn't get involved. He is mere a witness. He is the self. He is ever lost in his self. But, he's, but appears to be performing action. Appears to be doing everything. But please know that he is the highest detached that you can ever you know, see someone or understand. When you meet the great masters, please know that they are the highest detached beings that you can ever meet you know, in real time. They are the avaduta. They have the complete freedom which you and I do not have. Why? Because we're still attached and we are still in the material world, lost and doing things in this material world. But we need to become, we need to do nishkama karma, selfless action and all, also become free while doing our duties and be lost in the divine Lord Almighty. Why? Simply because when you are serving the purpose of Lord Sri Krishna, then you are already free. You're only doing a job for him. Work is worship. He plans innumerable, innumerable marvelous events and appears in different guises to those on whom he bestows his grace. Listen to his prowess. Those who try to comprehend him by meditating upon him or sing his praises are looked after by him. Completely, all their wants thus removed. See, all their wants thus removed. You should never have hankering after things. Um, I want this, I want that. You know, give me this, give me that. I'll tell you a very uh, interesting experience of my own self. In just this one month old, I was under, when I met my Guruji, rather he found me. And when I met him and I was walking on the path, you know, that one month, he just told me, we, we had gone to Kolkata and that time he said, what do you want? You know, give me your list. What exactly do you want in life? 
I rattled off for 20 minutes. I want this. I want that. I want this. I want that. He says, you have too big a list, you know. Your wants are not ending at all. It's, it's a never ending. List. It's like a bottomless pit, he said. I didn't understand at that moment in time. But of course, I was too ignorant being. I didn't know anything. But I just rattled off innocently to him everything that I want. And he said, can you stop? Is there a stop button? <laughs> It is so funny how my Guruji said, I just can, you know, relate to that event now and I feel so stupid. I didn't know anything, but he was so gracious. And I must say this, when I, with my Guruji, I've, I have narrated the story, but I'm just going to give a context why I'm saying this. When I went to Dakshineshwar and we, when we went into the Ramakrishna Paramahamsa Ji's meditation room, sitting there over there and when I experienced that hand of Ram Krishna Paramahamsa on my head I couldn't see but that huge heavy hand was you know he kept on my head as a benediction at that time there was no ask everything before that I was like um, I was just asking I don't know what I was asking of course I was asking it's always a want right the mind is always trained to do that when you visit a temple or any holy place you always tell what you want what are your problems and even as I sat in Ram Krishna you know Paramahamsa Ji's the room I was still asking few things the moment his hand was kept on my head not a word I was able to utter not a single ask came from that from after that and then from there on, I didn't have anything to ask. That was a very strange experience and the most beautiful experience. It was extremely divine. It was not a word that would come from my mouth after that, like seeking something. It was just a feeling of love. I was completely, like I didn't want anything. It's a, it's a beautiful experience. So don't have to ask. They themselves know what is good for you and will bestow upon you. That is the great greatness of these lord almighty and the divine master so you don't have to ask don't go with ask i'm telling you this when you have your love and devotion everything will come at its perfect timing there is nothing for you to ask just be lost in devotion to them show that love that is what you need to seek you know that your love and devotion has to grow day by day moment by moment every second that is what you need to seek Those who try to comprehend him by meditating upon him or sing his praises are looked after him completely. All their wants thus removed. He is fond of his own stories. Hence, making an excuse of the listeners and the narrator, he fulfills the wishes of his devotees by reminding me all the time. You know, my Guruji will always say, you have to sing the praises of the Divine Lord Almighty. We have to share the beautiful Leelas that they have performed on this planet earth when they have manifested. So that is the sweetness. You have to always glorify the divine. That is what is important. It's the path of devotion. That, that is one of the aspects in the devotional service that you have to perform. He who has renounced the worldly life is constantly and with all his mind and heart engaged in the highest end of man with enjoyment of the divine nature and has won over him who holds the disc in his hand, that is, Lord Sri Vishnu. He has uplifted innumerable creatures. He who is worshipped in and outside of this country and the banner of whose devotion flies high. He calls to himself the meek and the poor, fulfilling the wishes of all. See, you don't have to ask. The Lord will take care of you. You just have to be devoted, always seeing the glories and the praises of the divine Lord Almighty. Fill yourself with that love so that you can offer that love as you know you are offering to him. The highest devotion is the greatest offering that you can you know, serve the master with, with that devotion. That is what you can offer to them. That pure devotion. Single pointed devotion is all the Lord seeks from you. But now listen respectfully to the most sacred Satcharitra. May the ears of the listeners and the mouth of the speaker be purified. See, when you listen, your ears, you know, your purification of your hearing happens. Then you can listen. See, there is a difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is you're, you're just hearing. It comes, it does not, everything goes in. But when you listen, the words percolate inside your being. It, you know, it gets into your heart. 
then you can do manan. So listening is important. It is not about hearing. So the purification of, you know, the hearing will happen. Then the listening will, then you will be able to listen. Once two gentlemen from Gomantaka, that is Goa, came from Sai's Darshan, came for Sai's Darshan. And delighted by the Darshan, both were engrossed at his feet. Though they both came together, Sai asked only one for them, one of them for Dakshina, saying, Give me 15 rupees, which he gave most happily. Though he did not ask the other for anything, he on his own offered rupees 35, which Sai promptly refused to his great astonishment. On that occasion, Madhura was present too. And seeing such differentiation, just listen to what he asked Sai. Baba, how can you do such a thing? When two friends have come together, you ask for Dakshina from one and when the other offers, you on his own, you return it. How can the saints differentiate thus? Of your own will, you ask one for Dakshina and return it when somebody gives you voluntarily much to his disappointment. You like to accept the smaller amount but show detachment to, towards the larger one. Had I been in your position, I would not have behaved in this way. Shamya, you do not understand. I, for one, never take anything from anyone. It is the presiding goddess of this Masjid Mai Mosque who asks for her dues, by paying which the giver is freed of his debt. Do I have a house or a family that I should require this wealth? I am in every way free from all care. But debt Enmity and murder are such that the doer can never escape from. You make vows before goddesses when in need, but I have to take the trouble to free you from them. You have not a care in the world about it. Afterwards, though at the time of need, you beseech abjectly. Truly, I am always pleased with him among my devotees who has no debt to repay. Initially, this man was poor. He took a vow that if he earned 15 rupees, he would offer his first salary to God. But later, he forgot all about it. See, this is what Baba says. We take vows. We, we commit certain things, but we conveniently forget after that. Once we get it, we completely forget what we said. And then he says, Baba, then I have to take the trouble to free you from them because we have already committed the sin. You can't see God has not delayed in giving you, right? So why do you forget conveniently what you have promised to offer to the God? This is very important lesson. So don't forget what you promised to offer to the God. It is extremely important that you keep your commitment. 15 rupees became 30, 30 became 60 and 60, 600, 60, 100, sorry, 60 and then 100. As his salary doubled and increased four times, his forgetfulness also increased. Can you see that? As your greed grows, then you conveniently forget God. Only when you want, you go ask him, you beg from him and God grants it to you. Then you conveniently forget. Then you think you have got this on your own will. You know, it is your, you are deserving and you have worked really hard. That is why God has given you this promotion and that time God doesn't exist. Oh, I have got it. So the ego comes in play and you've completely forgotten about what you went and begged with your begging boat. And please remember, it is the greatness of the God that God has, you know, put the arms into your begging boat. In the course of time, he began earning rupees 700 when by a wonderful concurrence, the union of destiny and one's good work, he has come here today. And so I asked from him my 15 rupees under the pretext of Dakshina. Now listen to the second story. Once, as I was wandering along the sea coast, I came across a huge mansion. So I sat down on its veranda. The master of that mansion was a wealthy Brahmin of eminent descent. He welcomed me cordially. 
offering me food and drink in plenty. Thereafter, in that same place, near an inbuilt cupboard, in the wall, he gave me a clean, comfortable place to sleep, and I fell asleep. Seeing that I was fast asleep, he broke open the wall by sliding a stone slab, and without my knowledge, he cut my pocket, depriving me totally of everything. On waking up, when I realized this, I suddenly burst into tears. For I had lost 30,000 rupees. My mind was extremely agitated and filled with regrets. The money was all in bank notes. At the, at the shock of this sudden loss, my heart received a jolt. The Brahmin, on the other hand, began to console me. I could not relish food or water. For 15 days, I sat dazed on the veranda in the same place, in the most pitiable condition. At the close of the 15th day, a fakir wandering on the road, pronouncing spiritual conundrums aloud, suddenly came there and saw me weeping. He asked me the reason for my sorrows. I told him everything in detail. He said, if you will do as I tell you, all your troubles will end. I will tell you about a fakir, his place of habitation, etc. You surrender to him wholeheartedly and he will give you back your wealth. But until you get what you want, you must follow one discipline that I prescribe. Give up an item of food that you are very fond of. By doing so, you will accomplish your objective. By following his instruction, I met the fakir and I got back my money. I then left that mansion and went along the sea coast as before. Walking along in this manner, eventually I found a boat. But I could not gain entry on it. Suddenly, a good nurtured sepoy found me a place on the boat. The wind being favourable, the boat reached the other shore in time. I then sat in Tonga and came home. And these I saw this Masjid Mai. Baba's story ended here. Shama was then commanded to take the guests home and to feed them. Food was served and as they sat down to the meal, Madhurav's curiosity was aroused. He asked the guests, were you quite convinced of the story Baba related? If you consider the facts, Sai Baba has settled down here. He has not known ever the sea, the boat or the sepoy. Oh, what Brahmin and what mansion? All his life he has been spent, he has been spent, all his life has been spent at the foot of a tree. From whence came all this wealth that the thief robbed? Therefore, this must have been an incident related to you that took place in the past, which he narrated and he began, he began it as soon as you came so that you may recognize it. Choked with emotion, the guest said, Sai is all-knowing God, incarnate, who is free from the pairs of duality, is one with God, ind indivisible and all-pervasive. The story he narrated just now is our very own story, Letter for letter. Come, as soon as this feast is over, we shall tell you everything in detail. So this signifies that Sai is all-knowing, his all-pervasiveness. This is what it means. So let us understand what has happened now. Whatever Baba said had all taken place. But how did he know all this when he does not even know us? Hence, all this was very strange, very, very strange. The meal over, while chewing pan with Madhurav, the narration began. One of them said, my original place is the Ghats, that is the mountainous re region of the Sh Shayadris. Shayadris. But there must have been some connection with the coastline as far as my livelihood was concerned. And for this reason, I went all the way to Gomantak in search of a job. Very respectfully, I had prayed and vowed to Lord Gatatreya for my purpose. I had bowed at his feet and prayed, O oh God, a job is a necessity for me to support my family. Please be gracious and give me one. If you, if you will keep your promise within a short while from today, I shall offer to you all that I earn in the first month. Can you believe this is the commitment you are giving the Lord? And how, how can you then... You know, completely forget about that commitment just because the job you got and the first salary. Can't you remember that this job is the grace of the Lord Almighty? Lord Dathatre has bestowed me. Shouldn't I then go offer what I have committed? Imagine how much of sins you accrue. 
See, when you do not commit at that moment in time, please know that for that many years, it's also the interest that gets accrued. It is not just that amount. So some calamity will befall you. This is what you need to know. When you do not keep what you promise to offer to anyone for that matter. Fortunately, Lord Datta was pleased to grant my wish very shortly. Thereafter, and I started earning 15 rupees in the beginning. Soon I got promotions exactly as Sai Baba had described. However, the memory of my vow was completely obliterated from my mind. Hence, I was reminded of it in this way. Someone may think that he had taken Dakshina from me. It was not Dakshina, but only a payment of my debt. And under that pretext, I was reminded of my very old vow. In short, Sai does not expect money, nor does he allow his devotees to beg for it. For he always looked upon money as a calamity and saved his devotees from its temptation. A devotee like Mal Sapati, who was forever absorbed at his feet, irked out a livelihood with greatest difficulty. But Sai never permitted him to collect wealth, even in the slightest measure. Often, Sai himself distributed to the people the money that came to him as Dakshina. Absolutely. The gurus don't touch the offering. You know, I have to tell you, in Krishna Ashram, anybody who offers to my Guruji, he doesn't even touch that offering. Sometimes he will take it and give it, to, give it away to whoever is visiting. To the right, I don't know how he does it, but to some he'll give it. Sometimes he will just say, keep it aside. Sometimes he will spend it in something for, you know, for running of the ashram or whatever the purpose is. But he will never use anything for himself. Not a penny will he take it for himself. That is the greatness of the Guru. People need to understand. He doesn't touch whatever of is offered to him, but he gives it away to people. Often, Sai himself distributed to the people the money that came to him as Dakshina, but never once did he even appise to Mal Sapati, who was financially in distress. And Mal Sapati too was so self-respecting that in spite of Sai's great generosity, he never spread his palm before Sai. In, in entreaty, his financial condition was so low that, but his renunciation was of the highest order. See, sometimes deliberately the great masters don't give but you don't know why that is. It is meant to be. So you need to understand this truth. Always satisfied with the little that he had, he bore the tribulations of poverty most valiantly. Once a kind-hearted merchant, Hansraj by name, felt like giving something to Malzapati. On seeing his abject poverty, a kind thought naturally rose in his mind to offer him any help that he could. But though such was his condition, Sainath did not approve of anyone else, offering him help either. He only encouraged in his, in his devotee a disinterest in wealth. So what that merchant did was, in the presence of both Baba and Malsapati, he put some money in Malsapati's hand out of compassion. When they were in Baba's darbar, with great humility, Malsapati gave the money back, saying, Without Sai's permission, I cannot accept it. How great is this devotion? Anything that you accept or anyone somebody gives you, you always accept only with the consent of the great masters. You just don't accept anything. We at Krishna Ashram, sometimes people give us different things, but we don't accept everything. It's only with the permission of my Guru will we say, Okay, yes, you can offer it. Or when my Guruji says, No, we don't accept these things. But sometimes... People will force upon us and give it. At that time, my Guruji will just let it be. And he will do the needful. But many a time, we will always ask the permission from my Guruji and then accept the offering. That is how it is. We just don't take anything just because people want to offer it or give it to whatever that they feel like. And many a time, my Guruji will say, okay, it is their love that they want to they insist there are a lot of devotees or disciples who will insist. At that time, my Guruji will graciously say, okay. But many a time, he'll genuinely not, not want such things. That is how the great masters work. So, with great humility, Malsapati gave the money back, saying, without Sai's permission, I cannot accept it. Here was a selfless, loving devotee who hankered not after money, but after spirituality and who had surrendered his body and soul at Sai's feet. 
So Hansraj entreated Sai for permission, but Sai would not allow him to touch even a pice and said, Money will not tempt my devotee. See, this is how it works. He will never get caught in the splendor of wealth. Now, that second guess began. Even I have recognized my mark. Listen and I shall tell you everything. Listening to it, you will derive much pleasure. A Brahmin had been in my service for 35 years. He was diligent and completely trustworthy. Unfortunately, his good sense betrayed him and he took away my money. In the wall of my house, there was an inbuilt cupboard. He lightly slid the stones and made a hole without anyone knowing it. He made a hole in that same cupboard that Baba mentioned. For that purpose, he removed the stones of the wall when everybody was sleeping. Then again, Baba mentioned my money was stolen, which is also absolutely true. A bundle of notes was robbed and its value was exactly 30,000. I do not know how Baba knew all this. But when my hard-earned money was thus gone, I sat weeping day and night. Searching for it, my mind was totally exhausted. I just did not know what to do. For 15 days, I sat caught up in the whirlpool of worry and anxiety from which I could not extricate myself. See, again, this is what happens when you have the wealth. You know, you get lost. If You know, you have to always safeguard your wealth. You have to protect it. You know, you lose sleep over your wealth. This is what my Guruji also teaches. You know, you have to you have to worry about how, how, how to keep your wealth safely. If someone drops, what happens? Can you see the disaster? When somebody took away that hard-earned money, he lost his sleep. His mind was completely exhausted searching for it. And he couldn't, he didn't have peace at all. So his mind was dwelling in that wealth. And then you, you just destroy your life completely being lost in that. And then where is your spiritual being? You are completely gone into that one thing only. Constantly your mind is dwelling in that. Oh, my money is gone. My hard-earned money is gone. My hard-earned money is gone. You will not even be able to eat. This is what it means. But to be free, you don't have anything in your name. No money, nothing, nothing, nothing. My Guruji says, I have no bank account. I have no money, nothing in my name. I am so free. He's ever free. He'll always call himself. I'm, I'm just, I'm living at, you know, um, handouts by people, by the devotees. You know, that's his greatness. No, he's not living on any handouts. On the contrary, he's the one who's handing us out. It is because of his grace that we have everything. He's the one who's the master of everything. He owns this entire universe. And from that, you know, he put arms in our begging bowl. That is the greatness of my Krishna Guruji. And yet he shows how humble he is. Humility is his, you know, he is a personification of humility. He is a personification of being humble. That is the greatness of him. The avaduta doesn't covet anything, has nothing. He even, he has the heart to give away the entire wealth that he had. His entire family property. He was the sole, you know, he was the heir to that soul. He was the sole heir uh, to the entire wealth but he just gave away. He didn't claim even one bit. That is his greatness. One day, while I sat in the veranda, saddened at heart, a fakir came walking on the road, putting questions aloud. I will definitely narrate that story with the permission of my Guruji about how he gave away the entire wealth. He didn't claim even one bit. Seeing my sad face, he asked me the reason for my sadness. When I told him everything, he suggested a remedy for removing it. In the Kopargaon Taluka, at a village called Shirdi, lives Sai Aulia. To him you pray and make a vow. You give up eating something that you are very fond of and say to him that I give it up until I get your darshan. When the fakir told me this, I gave up food without a moment's delay saying, Baba, when my stolen wealth is regained and I have your darshan, only then will I part, will I take food. After that, just a fortnight passed, God knows what the Brahmin thought, but he came to me on his own and gave me back my money. My intellect be betrayed me, he said, and hence such a deed was committed, but now I place my head on your feet. Do say, I forgive you. All went well thereafter. I felt a fond desire for Sai Darshan, and that, too, that wish too has been fulfilled today. Blessed, blessed is my good fortune. But he who came to console me as I sat dejected and in distress in my veranda 
him I have not met again, that is Sai himself. Can you believe how the, what is the kind of a greatness these great masters are, all pervasiveness and they manifest in wherever you are to remove your distress, to avert the calamities, to solve your problems. That is the greatness of these divine beings. They are there ever ready to so, you know, take care of your well-being and make sure that nobody incurs sins, nobody accrues karma. That is the greatness of these divine masters. <clears throat> he who had such a sincere heartfelt concern for me and told me about Sai, pointing his finger towards Shridi, him I have not set eyes on again. He whom I met so unexpectedly as he came pronouncing questions aloud and who ultimately made me take a vow, him I have not seen again. Truly, Sai, this Aulia of yours seems to be the same Fakir. He was himself eager to give us darshan. For the fulfillment of their wishes, people wish for a saint's darshan, but I did not even wish for it. However, this Fakir himself encouraged me at the outset to have it so that I may get back my money. And it is just not possible that he, by vowing to whom I regained my wealth so effortlessly, is going to is going to be tempted by my by my dakshina of 35 rupees? Of course not. On the contrary, to make us the ignorant men eager for spirituality in our own interest, he strives all the time to bring us to the right path under such a pretext. Only for this purpose is this avatar, absolutely. The manifestation is only for everyone's spiritual upliftment and to bring dharma back on its path to establish righteousness, to establish dharma and put everyone, those who have strayed that path and gone off on the unrighteousness. So that is exactly why these divine beings manifest. To, and not just that, right? There might be a lot of unrighteous people, but they give them an, up, an opportunity to uplift themselves too. So they only care about everyone's well-being. Or else, how would we, the lowly creatures, without any devotion, be able to get across the ocean of worldly life safely? Just think of this calmly. And so, after regaining the stolen wealth, I was overjoyed that I consequently forgot all about my vow. Hard is the temptation of wealth to resist. Absolutely. It's lust and greed are uh, enemies of the one who wants to evolve on the path of spirituality. So never get carried by lust or greed. Greed and lust both will only bring you downward spiral. You cannot evolve above. You can't evolve on the path of spirituality. Later on, once while I was at the Kolaba side, present Raigad district of Maharashtra, I saw Sai in a dream and I set out to go to Shridi at once. When Samarth described as his journey the refusal of permission to enter the boat and the averting of the difficulty by the sepoy's efforts, all that is true too. These were all my problems when I reached the spot where the boat stood. Some sepoy really pleaded for me. Only then did the officer of the boat, who had earlier turned down my request, oblige me by giving me a place. That sepoy too was a total stranger. Yet he said that he knew me. Therefore, no one stopped us and we sat in the boat quite happily. Such is the story of the boat and of the sepoy, which, though it all had all happened to me, the side took it upon himself. Thinking of his marvel, my mind is simply not plussed and I realize that Sai fills this entire universe. Not even a tiny atom of space on this earth is without him. As he gave us the experience so will he give others too. Who are we? And from where have we me come? Where have me come? But how great is our good fortune that he has instantly pulled us to himself and brought us to the right path thereby. Oh, that we should have taken a vow that our wealth should have been stolen. And what a marvel of the manner of fulfillment of our vow too. How effortlessly the wealth was regained. With this, 
this is end of the story and since we are at the end of the art i shall stop here but on monday i will narrate a very beautiful experience in the similar capacity which happened with one of my guruji's disciple so thank you for joining sai satcharitra parayan i will see you all tomorrow for, in the morning from 8:30 to 9:30 for devi mahatmyam parayan om shri ma गणपते नम ओं श्री गुरुदेव दत्त ओं श्री सचिदानंद सद्गुरु साईनाथ महाराज की जय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय दिगंबरा दिगंबरा श्रीपाद वल्लभ दिगंबरा ओम श्री कृष्ण गुरुनाथ नाथ श्री गुरव नम ओं देवी दुर्गाय नम ओं श्री कृष्णार्पण नमस्तु कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु